The entrance of thy word, it giveth light, and it giveth understanding unto the simple, and I welcome you to your favorite program in His presence, a program that talks about the word of God, and how we can apply the word of God into our life so we can become a transformed, changed person from the old ways of life into the newness of life in Christ Jesus. See, we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of stature of fullness of Christ. And this is the day that the Lord has made, we shall all rejoice and be glad in it, and it's of the mercies of the Lord that the Lord has kept you and myself to witness another brand new day we need to give all the praises all the honor all the adoration back unto him because it deserves the praise it deserves the honor and it deserves all the glory hence we need to return all back unto him and i'm your host for today i am akin kunle akela and this is a special edition of in his presence and i'm happy to announce to you that we are joined by apostle ansel maduboku of revival assembly ministries international in lagos is here to discuss with us on this great day that is a great privilege for us to have you to come and be with us on this great day thank you thank you amen and we are highly honored to have you here because of your tight schedule but you still have to make time to be with us on this great day and we are so grateful to god for that opportunity you've actually released unto thank us you. Thank you so much. amen uh, um daddy this is actually a special edition of in his presence and when we have fathers in faith we want to bring them in because we know there is a word from them to upcoming generations even to pastors to apostles to bishops they have a word that god has actually given to them to actually share to the old world. But before we go into that message which the Lord has actually laid in your heart for them, we want to get to know about you. Let's start with your salvation experience. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ansel Madibuko. Um, I trained as an architect from the University of Nigeria in the campus. I left, I left school in 1982. Uh, I was working in an architectural firm my youth service in 83 and one of those lovely days in August a young man walked into the office from the University of Ife he was coming to do his attachment IT and um, he started telling me about Jesus you know I was in school for six years in the university for six years nobody told me about Jesus you know, because um, I was a pirate I was a secret society I was a head of Pirates confraternity I was a lodge member. I was, you know, I was a DJ. I was, I was on the other lane. I was on a very fast lane. So the Christians in the campus assumed that I was already uh, in hell, you know. So nobody bothered to tell me anything about Jesus. In fact, we were we were bringing people from SU to our parties, you know. We're like, what are you doing there? It's for frustrated people, you know. <laughs> so. Um, that's my a bit of my my background, you know, leaving school. So I left school and when I found myself in Lagos, working with um, architect Tommy Kimi at that time. And uh, this young man walks and says to me, "It's all about Jesus." And I'm like, "What about Jesus?" You know, my idea about Christians, apart from I was born a Catholic, you know, but after a while I stopped going to church because it, it wasn't making sense to me. You know, the Catholic religion didn't make sense to me at all. So I stopped going to church. And I was about to join the Ekan car. Thank God I did not. For the week I got saved, I had already tried to get to their office then at Oju Elegba to enroll in this Ekan car, whatever. I had read the books from Paul Switchell and all that, you know. But God interjected, you know, and... Uh, this young man walks into the office and begins to tell me about Jesus. I'm like, I'm not interested. What's, I don't want this Jesus. I want to live my life, you know. But luckily, I believe it was my time, you know. That's why I believe that God has a time for everybody. And when your time comes, there's nothing the enemy can do to, to quench it, you know. At that time, he came and I found myself, oh, 4th of August, 1983. It's still so fresh in my memory. I found myself kneeling down in, in, in the office and I prayed the sinner's prayer. I said, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior, blah, 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 blah. 
And from that moment, something happened. That never happened when I was initiated into the lodge or made the Kapun of the Paris confraternity. You know, exact opposite. The kind of peace I've never felt in my life, you know, just filled my soul. And wow, it was like, this is it, you know. Eureka, I found it, you know. And um, everything changed. My, my habits changed. My appetites changed. It changed from sin to righteousness. And uh, I stopped. I couldn't drink again, I couldn't smoke again, I couldn't party again, I couldn't do the lodge again, I couldn't be pirates, I had to, you know, I broke away from all those things. Nobody told me. Yeah, nobody told me to, it just happened like that, you know. Nobody told me anything, don't do this or don't do that, but it was just like that, everything just broke. And I found myself deeply into the Lord, and I was loving it, and people thought I was crazy, and I had some very rough friends. Very bad people, both men and women. You know, you know when they heard I was saved, oh, it was like a big, it was a breaking news. How can I say I'm get saved? This guy was too bad to be saved. But God likes bad people. <laughs> God goes for bad boys, you know. So um, it's been wonderful since that day till today. I've been walking with the Lord, no regrets. Looking forward to even more exciting times in the Lord. Amen. The Bible in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And you actually mentioned in your own experience, you notice the peace, yes. your habits actually change. Aside from all those things, is there any other change that you actually notice from the old ways of your life into the newness of yeah, life everything. in Christ Jesus? I mean, I, before I couldn't read the Bible. I could never, I never read the Bible in my life. You know, I, I just had the Bible under my pillow. <laughs> I never, I mean, it was too, it didn't make sense to me. It was too boring, it was too, I, I didn't, it didn't make sense. You know. And that's why I tell people, if, you're not ha if you don't have the Spirit of God, you cannot read the Bible, you know. So what I, be, I now developed an appetite for the Bible, the Word of God. I began to look for, you know, f true Bible-believing churches, where I could hear, you know, the unadulterated gospel. And, you know, that was all I wanted at that time. I, I was, the Bible says, newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word. You know, so I was desirous of the word. And it was just normal for me to, you know, just go all the way. Nobody told me go to church or come for fellowship. I was looking for fellowship. You know, like what's happening now. Now people get saved and they don't even want to come to church. But in those days, in the 83s, early, early 80s, it was very, very different. You know, nobody was pushing anybody. We were looking for Jesus. We, were look, we wanted everything about God, you know. It was just more of God. Lord, come into my life. Take over, you know. Bless, just fill us with your glory. Fill us with your power. It was, nobody was even praying for a car or for a job. You know, it was all about more of you, you know. And um, it was amazing. It was an amazing season. You know, we, we saw a mighty moves of God and, you know, uh, it, it, everything changed. You know, everything changed. Mm -hmm. The Bible is true. The Bible Amen. is true. Amen. That's so powerful and super powerful. Thank you so much, sir. And to our viewers out there, let's go on to our first music video. We'll be right back with more for you. And we're joined by Apostle Ansel Madiboko. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. In your presence. That's where I belong In your prayer Don't give up on the Church of Christ The Church of God will always prevail Welcome back from that first music video. And if you're just joining us, you're tuned into In His Presence. And we're joined by Apostle Ansel Maduboko of Revival Assembly Ministries International in Lagos, Nigeria. So before we went to the previous break, you shared with us a salvation experience. And you said something that, that, that is very profound and it's just the truth, which is not a fact, which is, can be subject to changes. That at those days in the, in, the, in the early 80s, nobody was trying to push people to come to church. Mm -hmm. The desire was there. The hunger was there. Mm -hmm. so, so, can, can we say that 
Is it the people? We're not trying to condemn people now. We just want to put things right now. Because we've heard of people say, where is that old-time religion exactly. that we actually receive? Yeah. Is there something different from the old-time religion to this religion? Or is it that the people are, are they're not properly postured when it comes to the things of God? I think Satan is, uh, has done well. He has, done, he, has, he has quenched the fire. He has removed the hunger. I don't know how he did it. He has put many to sleep. So we, uh, I thought one assignment God gave me was to wake up the sleeping church, which has taken me almost around the world, you know. Uh, wake up a sleeping church based on Romans 13, 11. And um, it is, it's, uh, because we want, we want to go back to the past. We want the future to be like the past. One time the Lord said to me, the future of the church is in the past. I didn't understand it. But now I do. But as we go ahead, we're trusting God for another revival. You know, to bring back the hearts of men back to God, you know. Back to righteousness. Back to the fear of God. Back to, to how it used to be, you know. It used to be awesome, you know. Uh, like I said... We were looking for God, you know, and any opportunity we had, we made full use of it to bring in God and bring God to people and bring people to God, you know. Nobody begged anybody to evangelize. Evangelism was like running in the blood. Come to think of it, maybe we were in a revival then, you know, because now it's not like, you know, now you have to beg people to get saved, beg them to stay saved, beg them to act saved, Beg them to pray, you know, beg them to fast, beg them to study. So it's like if I give them money, you have to now pay people for everything. You know, to go and win souls, you have to get people and pay them. To sing in the church, you pay people to sing. You know, so everything is, I don't know what has happened, but it's a terrible thing that if God doesn't intervene as soon as possible, the church will be out, I'm telling you. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail, but it looks as if it's prevailing right now. But I know that God is God and he will never fail. Amen. So before we actually go back to the aspect of the revival we mentioned, let's just quickly go into the mandate that God actually gave to you. Yes. As I'm saying, he says to me to wake up a sleeping church. You know, the church is asleep. You know, the Bible says when men slept, the enemy came in and sold her. So... Uh, it, 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 as we've been sleeping all these years, he has shown in what we are experiencing now, you know. So we don't even know who is a Christian anymore. People, you see them in the club on Saturday and on Sunday morning, they're in the church choir singing and praying and crying, you know. So uh, for them, old things have not passed away, <laughs> you know. So it's so, hard, it's so terrible. And, and the, the funny thing is that they have the impression that everything is fine, you know. I love Jesus, I know Jesus, and, uh, and uh, well, that's all that matters. I don't need to stop going to club, I don't need to stop drinking, I don't need to stop smoking. I just, all I know is I, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that's the only requirement needed to be saved, and I, and I believe it. So you see somebody in the club, or you see somebody who is a stripper in the club, and you tell her, hey, I saw you on, on the WhatsApp or somewhere, and you were, say, yes, I, I saw what, I'm, I'm born again. You know, <laughs> I believe that Jesus is Lord. So what do you say? Mm. So well, only God can judge. God knows what's going on. But that's what's happening now. The things that were, that were like a taboo in those days are now the new normal. Yeah, they're normal now. And the way you, when, you, when you try to challenge it, they say you're judging them. Don't judge me. Don't leave me in my work. You know, I, I, I don't want to be judged. Just leave me to serve my God the way I know. You know, God is love. God loves me and... That's all I want to let you know. I, I sleep with men. It's, God, it's my business. God will help me, you know. So you hear such things now. And we are doing it boldly. I, I went to preach sometime in Italy. And I was amazed that a, an incredible church, you know. It's, it's a Nigerian church. So after I finished preaching, I went to the pastor's office. You know, we spent like two hours in the office just talking and, and all that. So when he was not taking me home, I saw people standing on the roads. It's in Italy. And I said to her, uh, are these not your church people? He said, yeah. I said, what's going on? He said, they're all prostitutes. 
And they come to church. Yes. They pay their tithe from their trade. Uh, I'm telling the gospel. I was like, what? What? They say, what? In, in, yeah. Well, they're all prostitutes. And they all want to come to church. And they, they pray to God to give us men, give us customers, and let's do good. And we promise we'll bring money. You know? So when you see such things, you don't know what to say. You tell them, you don't do that. They say, okay, what are we going to do? This is our job, you know. <laughs> the church is in trouble, I'm telling you. you know, God has to really intervene. There's so much division. There's tribalism. There's competition. There's evil. There's hatred. So I don't know if it's affecting the quality and the strength of the word coming from the spirit of the pastors. You know, that the words have no meaning. The words don't mean anything to them. You hearing people say, I don't do adultery, don't do fornication. The people you are talking to will leave the church with women. You know, I'm going to do exactly what you said, don't do. So in those days, nobody even told us about not doing anything. It was natural. There was just a natural fear that sin was a no-go, no-no, you know. It wasn't something that um, was to be talked about or allowed, or like how it is today. In fact, some places, they tell you, that being prisoner against sin is being judgmental. You know, and some people will tell you, in my church, my pastor doesn't tell us things like this. He doesn't condemn us. So it's just crazy. But I believe God will, God will, God will, God will eventually prevail. You know. Amen. There's something I would just really want to help us shed more light and then bring to light. Now, we know that there are some things that are morally correct. Mm -hmm. So are we now saying that when things like that, that they're not meant to happen in the church, are we saying, we're not judging now, mm -hmm. and we're not trying to proselytize people now. We just actually want to say, is it that people are not genuinely saved, or we say the fire is actually dwindling down, so that the things that we can even say outside the church that are morals, they're not even morals in the church, anything just goes. Yeah, honestly, I don't have the answer. I don't have the answer. I don't know why it is so. And it's everywhere in the world. Everywhere, every pastor, every true pastor is telling you, I don't know what's going on. Nobody wants to evangelize anymore. Mm. Nobody wants to evangelize. People come to church alone. They go alone for three years, five years. And they sit in church. You are preaching every day. Save souls. Jesus said, go into the world, preach, bring the church, compel them to come, bring the sinner. You talk to them, they don't want to hear you. They come alone. You have a program, you give them flyer, they put it in their Bible. We have about less than 10% of the church actually doing the work, supporting the work financially, praying for the church, winning souls. Very, very few people do that now. And it used to be the other way around. Almost everybody. When I got saved, man, all my friends got saved. All my crowd got saved. I dragged them to church, you know. I dragged hundreds of my friends to church because I couldn't sit. I could not stay without pulling them to God. I was uh, harassing them. I said, man, this is the way to go. Don't die in your sin. You go to hell. You know? So, it is a, it's a mystery for me because I don't understand it. So, um, that will now bring us to the next thing that we, I think we actually need to look into, which is the efficacy of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And I want to use Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 because mm -hmm. we know that the Word of God is powerful. powerful. Yeah. The Bible says, for the Word of God is quick. Powerful. And powerful, sharper than sharper. any two edges sword, pressing even to the dividing and son of the soul and spirit mm -hmm. and to the joints and marrows, mm -hmm. and is a discerner of thoughts yeah. and the intent of their. Are we now saying that the, the power of the word has. I, 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 I cannot answer that question because I know what the, the word can do. Mm -hmm. I know what the word says about the word of God. He has exalted the word even above his name. Mm -hmm. Heaven will watch over his word to perform it. Heaven and ill pass over his word. You know, everything about the word is, has not changed. But I do not know how come this powerful word is not affecting the people it's supposed to affect. That I don't know. I don't know if it's that they're not saved, but they say they are saved. They say Jesus is my Lord. That's what it takes to be saved. Yeah? So I do not know. Only God knows why there is this laxity, this I don't care attitude, this mm -hmm. lack of commitment. Mm -hmm. I call it lack of zeal. The people don't have the zeal anymore to do anything for God. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, the people are more taken over by their own needs mm -hmm. that the, to solve their own problems, you know. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear that God takes his time. God's mm -hmm. time is the best. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. You know, wait again, I say on the Lord. They don't want to hear all those things that all the world things are working together for your good, you know, and they're working for you. You know, those, no, they just want a quick fix. 
And that is why they are going to all these wrong churches with wrong prophets mm -hmm. to do things they are not supposed to do in order to get their problem solved, mm -hmm. not knowing that it could be a process that just God is al allowing them to go through a process mm -hmm. to prepare them for their miracles that are, is right there. They don't want to go through any process. They want money now. They want a child now. They want to marry now. They want a job now. They want to do that. They want to money. Everything has to be now, you know. So it's a, it's a teaching that I think affected the church, you know. Mm. The idea that you don't need to wait. It, the faith is now. Now, now, now. I was supposed to go, they call it, you know. I want my miracle now. You know, people are saying, look, stop wasting your time. Stop waiting for six years. You can get it now. So when they come and, you know, wanting to get now, when they don't get now, they disconnect. That this doesn't work, but they have to stay there pretending. So their mind is somewhere else. And in fact, they can easily go to the, to the cult and do things to acquire some power and stuff. You know, so I think also the quality of the men of God, the quality of the word that's been preached, the, the lives of the, their, their consecration, you know, and all that. Maybe, maybe, but, you know, I, like I said, I don't want to tell it this is, I don't even know why it is so, because I've been asking the same question. That in my own time, we were different. Mm -hmm. Now, it's different. Yes, yeah. So, mm, I, I mean, sir, there's one of the things that I actually, I actually and personally believe in life, that the moment we're able to identify a problem, that means we know it's a problem, hence there needs to be a, a solution. And that's where we're actually going. Now, looking at the mandate that God actually gave to you, is to revive. Just read that Romans 13, 11. Okay, sir. So we, we go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah the Bible says, and that knowing now, the time, mm -hmm. that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Yes. For now is our salvation nearer than oh, when we believe. Yes, go on. Mm -hmm. Verse 12 now says, the night is fast spent. Yes. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. Mm -hmm. Let us therefore cast off. Cast the oh, works of darkness, of darkness and let us put on the armor, armor. of light yes. hmm. let us walk honestly as in the day yes. not in rioting and drunkenness yes. not in chambering and wantonness yes. not in strife and envy. Yes. the last verse now says but put, put ye on, on the death. lord christ yes. and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust Lost thereof death. now having said that about what the scripture says in romans chapter 13 from verse 11 to 14 let, what is revival let's look at revival revival is god God taking over. That's what that's in a layman's term. Uh, most most churches now uh, don't really have the spirit of God presiding. Yeah, most churches have used their 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 own laws or whatever mm -hmm. to drive the Holy Ghost out. People are not doing what they want to do. People will sit down and write their own church program how they want it. They won't say to God. How do we do this thing? So in the process of trying to be people friendly mm. and uh, not to lose members, we, become, we, we compromise mm. by maybe shortening our worship time to give them time to go to work and do stuff, you know. So we do, we do things that favor people more than what God wants. You understand me? So what in that process of trying to help God, we actually grieve the spirit. So when we have our churches now without the Holy Spirit, you know, he's there but he's bound. He's grieved. He cannot do what he's supposed to do because he's supposed to be his church. We're supposed to take orders from him, but we now give him orders. We write it out and say, Lord, this is what we want. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name. And we go on. Believe in that God. So most churches, when you go to most churches, it becomes, it's like, Lecture theaters now. Because there's no presence of God. You know? Pastors are preaching like lecturers. They're, they're telling people, people are writing, you know, just like in a lecture room. There's no spirit. There's letter. And the Bible says the letter killeth. Spirit, yes. You know, so, revival is lack of the presence of the spirit. That's what basically it is. So, most preachers have become motivational speakers. They're teaching people success. Those things are good, don't get me wrong, but they've made it the main thing. Mm -hmm. So Jesus and the, the power of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, spiritual warfare, 
fasting, prayer, breakthroughs, and signs and wonders, casting out devils, healing the sick, are no more talked about. They've become old-fashioned. So now it's more of how do I make more money? How do I buy more houses? How do I, you know, how do I do more? So it's, a, it's not a, we're not looking for how to better our lives with God. And we're not asking God, what shall we do? Like Paul, like Paul asked Jesus, what will you have me do? You know, that was a broken man. That was a man that said, okay, now it's, I'm, I'm here for you. You know, just any, anything you want, I'll do. So it has changed. A lot of dynamics have changed in the church. And that is why we have churches. People come and be sleeping. It's so boring. There's no spirit. There's no life. You just do your thing for the five minutes, five to 15 minutes, leave until next week. You know, so 45 minutes in God's presence for one week will not do much. You know, prayers is like, we don't have to really pray like that. You know, Christ has paid it all. We are celebrating the finished work. Of, yeah, the finished work of Christ is true. But that should not make us lazy. That should not make us not to pray and believe God and evangelize and live right, you know. So it is, uh, the lack of the spirit is, is the problem we're having. You know? so that's why revival is God returning, kind of, you know. Like it was in the beginning. If, you know, when you look at the book of Acts from verse 2, when the Holy Spirit came, look at the lives of the apostles. Look at how they preached. How they preach is not how we preach. You know, we preach our prosperity. We preach. We have. We tell people what, what, they, what God has given us. Mm. What God has given us since I got since Friday. I have ten cars. I have forty houses. I have this. I have that. And you know, so we make it like it's a thing for you know counting your mm. your your progress. You know, uh, but those guys were men after the souls of people. You know, they were after the souls of people. Paul was crying day and night. I'm I'm in prayer until Christ is formed in you. Mm. You know. Say, oh, you Galatian, who has bewitched you? Right in the Corinthians, we are still in strife. There's envy amongst you. Who is, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. Say, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? He said, it's God that planted. I said, I planted, Apollos watered. God gave the increase. So, it's God. Don't look at it. Don't divide yourselves and say, I belong to redeem, I belong to winners, I belong to assemblies. I belong. So, we, these walls are there. And it's not, it's not helping us. Amen. So, uh, as a father, you actually mentioned something, and I just want to quickly take you back. When you were actually talking about revival, revival talks about the uh, absence of the presence of God. And however, most ministers now, they've actually deviated from that part, trying to look at the people, look at what the people want and want to give to them. Now, let's just look at the consequences of being people-oriented, because we have a practical example in the scriptures, King Saul. The Lord gave an instruction, go and utterly destroy it. But he said, the people said, so that we can sacrifice to God. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You know, because you, most pastors you know, don't want to lose members. Mm -hmm. And at times, members come to you and say, Daddy, you know, there are people there. there. The, the reason why they are growing is because they are, they're teaching them so, you know, things that will help them to survive. And so things that are relevant. Because some people think that when you say some things that it's not relevant for today, some spiritual things are not necessary anymore. You know, we now have a different standard, with different da, 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 da. So, Saul listened to the people. We should listen to the Holy Spirit. You know, because the Holy Ghost has a better idea. Even though his style may be different, you know, but we have made people not... I, I've been amongst pastors who said, you keep waiting on the Spirit. We are moving forward. Yeah? You keep waiting for Holy Ghost. We are moving. We don't need him. We are, he, has, he has given us brain. We are using our brain. That's no, you don't, use, you, don't do, you don't do God's business with brain, no. You do it with faith. It's, it's his business. You know, so that's the kind of mentality some people have that, oh, these ones are still doing those things. We are moving on. We are, we are using the system that is working. It's a template. Template, that's what it is. They give you a template on how to speak in the altar, how to, what not to say. Don't pray in tongues on the altar. You know, da, 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 rules and templates and things to do, not to do. And that's why some of those churches can never bring some people to their pulpit because they will spoil their, 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 their business. Yeah. So the whole thing is to keep them, make them happy. You know, and in the process, the people are now 
over happy and don't, don't have the strength to go through any problem. You know, they're not trained to fight and to overcome. So when the trouble comes, they crumble. And they even visit where they shouldn't visit in search for solution. Because you've told them this is a new life, a good life, it's a high life, it's a happy life, you know, enjoy yourself, be happy. So when they can't be happy, then they wonder what's going on here. We're told that we're coming to be happy. We're supposed to be happy. God will answer all your prayers. He doesn't waste time. He loves you, blah, blah, blah. But we've got to tell the people the truth. But when you become a child of God, you're an enemy of Satan. And Satan will try to fight to stop you, to frustrate you, to make you throw the Bible away. It's not your friend. It's your enemy. He's, he's fighting your father. He's like you have an uncle, uh, your, brother, your father's brother, who is against him. And they're trying to help you. It's not possible. You know? So you've got to let them draw the line that it's a battle. Mm. We're, not, we're, we're wrestling with f not flesh and blood. Principalities, powers, and rulers, and all that. So, we have to don't bother about the people and tell them exactly what God says. Yeah. Mm, amen. That's so powerful and so profound. Thank you so much, sir. And so, our viewers out there, let's continue on to the short break. We'll be right back with more for you. Please stay with us. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your Don't give up on the Church of Christ. The Church of God will always prevail. Welcome back from that break. And if you're just joining us, you're tuning into His presence. And we're joined by Apostle Anselm Madoboku of Revival Assembly Ministries International in Lagos, Nigeria. So before we went to the previous break, you actually said a whole lot about what revival is and the consequences of being people-oriented rather than being God-oriented. And you said uh, revival is bringing back the presence of God now. I, I haven't said that revival is bringing back the presence of God now. How does revival come? If we're talking about well, revival. I believe revival starts from... Uh, God putting a desire in, yeah, in the heart of people, you know. The people are now committed and they say, yeah, I'm feeling that we should spend more time in prayer. Now, not for us, but for the will of God. Let's, let's believe God for a, a move of God. Let, let's have a higher measure of God in this business, you know. And then the prayer, prayer starts. It comes through people, people praying. Yeah. So it comes through fervent prayers. If you have, if you, if you have read the history of revivals, the Scottish revival, Welsh revival, the Azusa Street revival, all those things came when men forgot about themselves and were determined to bring the will of God to pass. Now, William Seymour was a blind man, a one-eyed man, a black man, in 1906, at a time when blacks were like animals. In fact, the story was that, you know, the others were in the, in the class studying, they leave him outside because he was black not permitted to come with the whites to listen to the word of God. So he was outside listening to the word of God and praying in the spirit, you know. And God, God came through him. And that, was the, that is the only revival that's affected white and black mm -hmm. as far back as 1906, you know. And other, other, other things that happen are, I don't call them revival, but people call them revival because they are very, if you go, they're only whites, you know. And I don't believe that revival is for only white or black. <laughs> When the time when the man also remember his color, mm -hmm. and that's why I say in Nigeria we don't have any revival yet because there's still tribalism. You know, you come to an Igbo church, you see Igbos. When Igbo is pastor, you come to a Yoruba church, you see Yoruba people everywhere. You know, and they can't even mix. There's division. There's internal strife. You know, the Igbo man, Yoruba man, just like the politicians. So you find the same thing happening in the church. So it can Those things are things that make it difficult for, for anything to happen. You know, so we got to get to that point where we, all those things are broken, truly broken, not broken in mouth. Mm. When tribalism goes from my blood, when the first thing I word out is, you are not Yoruba, I'm not Igbo, we are brothers. Mm. You get my point? Mm. I give you an appointment that is due you because you are a child of God and you are effective mm. and you are competent, not because you are Yoruba or you are Igbo. Mm. You know, as long as we put all those things in, in before anything else, nothing will happen, you know. So, 
Um, we have to really pray. Let God break down the walls of tribalism. Tribalism is it's never been like this in Nigeria, you know. I've been, I mean, I, mean, I come from there, but I've never seen a divided nation like this. Now, I don't know why, but talk about the church. You know, it's so terrible, you know. You know, it's as if tribe is what determines everything. Tribe determines who you go to, where you go to, what conference you go to, you look at who speakers, where they're from. Why should it be so? We should be led by the Spirit. And we shall allow the Holy Spirit gain ascendancy over our desires. Mm, mm, amen in Jesus' mighty name. So before we go on the next break, we just want you to pray for the world, pray for nations, pray for individuals about the revival, the coming revival, because I believe we've heard so many words of God has actually gone for that revival is coming, coming again. Yes. So we just want to pray for that now, mm -hmm. sir. All right. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to solve this problem, to die for us. Forgive our sins for we've not lived up to expectation. We've not, we've not done what we should do. We're sorry. We've come up with doctrines and stupid things that have grieved your Holy Spirit and we're sorry. Help us, Lord, to die to ourselves and allow the Holy Ghost freedom and access into our lives, our ministries, our churches, our homes, that what we preach is what we do. But the powers of tribalism and nepotism and injustice and favoritism be completely broken, the powers of denomination be destroyed, Lord, that we truly be one, that we will affect this world, that we will have a people on fire, people trusting God for another mighty move of God to see healings and deliverance and salvations like never before in millions, oh God, men and women hungry, asking the same question, what shall we do to be saved? We want to see salvation like never before. We want to see your power demonstrated like never before from the pulpit and from the pew. For Lord, for people to know that God is no respecter of persons. I pray that all of you watching me today, that you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and you will not stop there. You will make everybody you know to know that you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. That God will use you to win souls. God will use you to lay hands on the sick and see them healed. God will use you to cast devils out. God will use you to bring the gospel alive. That men and women will know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We break the powers against the church of Christ. We break the new world order. We break Illuminati. We come against world governments that are anti-Christ. We paralyze their plans to afflict and affect the church of Jesus Christ. We win, we reign in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you so much. And we know that a seed of revival has actually been sown now. Amen. And we know it will go through the world in Definitely. Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. And so if you also let's continue on to this short break that will be used for our prophecy declaration with our Father and the Lord. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. In the name that's above every other name, that wonderful name of Jesus. Your season of rejoicing will begin. No matter how long your night had been, your night went to night. Your end will be far more glorious than your beginning. Every siege against you, against your body, against your finances, against your family, against your business, against your church, against your nation shall be lifted tonight. In the name of the Almighty God, you will laugh last. <laughs> By the time the sun is rising physically tomorrow, your own sun will be risen also.
and you will never forget tonight. Yeah. It will be the beginning of your joy. Yeah. The beginning of your success. Yeah. The beginning of your progress. Yeah. You will laugh last. And for the rest of your life, you will serve God with gladness. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Welcome back from that prophecy declaration. I believe you've claimed every prophecy that has gone forth on you. Sir, so before we let you go on this episode, finally I'll read 75 verse 6 and then your final words to our viewers on this great day. The Bible in Psalm 85 verse 6, the Bible says, Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Yeah. And also you give us your, your final thoughts. Yeah, my final thought is, let's not give up on God. Don't give up on the church. I know that the church is under a heavy attack. All kind of fake people are making it difficult for people to trust the true church. Now, for every fake, they're, they're real. There are some real prophets and real apostles, real pastors who love God and who are truly bringing people to Christ. So don't give up on the church of Christ. The church of God will always prevail. Uh, the enemy is fighting, is raising a lot of evil people who claim to be shepherds who are not shepherds. So don't let them stop you from attending your fellowship, being committed there because Jesus Christ is Lord. So keep praying, keep trusting, keep loving, and may God forgive all of us and help us to move forward and to be strong in the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much, Daddy. We celebrate God in your life and we're confident that either as we're going to do good work and you perfect to the very end. Mm -hmm. And above all, thank you for making time to be with us on this great thank day. Thank you so much. Amen. You're, you're so blessed. You're so Amen. Blessed. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, This sir. is a gift. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. Sir. And so of you out there, I believe you've learned so many things on our topic today. We know that revival that we've been hearing about, the seed has actually been sown. Just be expectant. And Apostle Anselm actually mentioned something to us which is very key. Desire 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 the sincere milk of the word of god that you may be thoroughly furnished so the desire is important then fervent prayers and we cannot overemphasize the aspect of the word of god the word of god is able to build us up really want to appreciate you for the time you spent to watch this program and i believe you'll be blessed in the mighty way perhaps you have any comments on the leave those can get to shout with us on facebook and i want to say keep watching rtm god bless you <laughs>